for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. This Bunk Radio for the masses. Uh, yeah, man. How you doing? How you doing? Today's today's Monday, September nineteenth, two thousand and twenty-two. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and Annex Network's Race Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? It's Monday. Another amazing week here on Fade to Black. Kicking it off tonight, very special guest, Geraldine Orozco is with us. She's back. Tonight we're going to talk about making contact and what to do with it. That's right. I cannot wait for this show tonight. Tomorrow night. On this very network, right here, Christina Gomez. That's right. I want to find out. I want to find out tomorrow night from Christina. A discussion her and I have never had. Tomorrow night, I want I want to know what it's like to just go out there and discover the world. Because that's what she's doing, one subject at a time. What, what, what? What 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 makes that happen? We're going to do all of that uh, tomorrow night and much more with uh, Christina Gomez. Wednesday night, first time guest, writer, director, producer, and journalist, Melissa Tittle is with us. And I cannot wait for that. I've been working with Melissa for, uh, I got to say, eight years. Eight years, somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. She's never been on the show. She's always busy, always working, always doing something. But uh, tomorrow night, for the first time, Melissa, or, or Wednesday night, Melissa Tittle is with us. Thursday night's another fader night with open lines all night long. All right, coming up, I will be hosting. I will be emceeing. The Conscious Life Expo again this uh, February 10th through the 13th, 2023 at the LAX Hilton. Tickets and info, very simple, ConsciousLifeExpo.com. One of the biggest events of the year, the the biggest conference of its kind. It's ginormous, and it's so much fun. And I say it every year to the Fader Knots. I say it every year. I say it every night leading up to the conference. Until you have experienced the Conscious Life Expo, you're not going to get it. You just need to go and come and hang out with us. It's that spench, that special. It's, it's it's that amazing. So get your tickets. Come and hang out with us here in Los Angeles. ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And, uh, man, I had a heck of a weekend. <sighs> talk more about that in just a bit but i gotta say after a weekend like that 
of relaxing. You, you need you need time to relax. You got uh, after the relaxing. All right, that's what that's what you got to do. And I've been doing it with River Moon Coffee all day today. <sighs> so good. I will also be April 7th through the 14th, 2023, right after the Conscious Life Expo. I'm taking a cruise, and I want all of you to come on that cruise with me, the Hidden Secret Seminar at Sea Cruise, and a great lineup of speakers and presenters. And the links to everything are, are below. Just head over. Um, I, I keep I keep reminding you, Scott Walter's going to be there. Adam Apollo is going to be there. Nick Pope is going to be there. Brad Olson is going to be there. Vivian Chauvet is going to be there. And amongst many other uh, amazing speakers and presenters. Links are below. Come and hang out with us. Uh, Antarctica is back in the news. And every time I see Antarctica in the news, I think of Brad Olson. Man. He invited me on that trip, too, and I just couldn't make it happen. Uh, bucket list. So, But he pulled it off. Get your free membership right now to the Unex Network. Go to theunexnetwork.com. You're going to get the free monthly newsletter. You're going to get blog access. Everything's free. It's a free membership. Event notices. Everything's free. Just go to the Unex Network. The links are below. Go over to theunexnetwork.com. It'll click up. The memberships are right there. Go and do it, and you'll even get their quarterly magazine. You're going to get the digital version of it all for free. And so much more over at the unxnetwork.com. And uh, now, so I just went to Palm Springs. I went to Joshua Tree uh, this weekend. And everybody, I posted pictures. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to talk more about this. But uh, the fade to Bel the fade to black Jeep was the expedition Jeep too as well. I filled it full of people. We drove all over the desert, and uh, I gotta say, guest in the car don't care why. My Eden Pure thunderstorm cranking. That's right. In the hot sweaty desert, I've got my Eden Pure thunderstorm right there, USB plugged in. I've got guests getting in the car. I've got Billy Carson getting in. I got I got Elizabeth Hoekstra, four other people in and out of the car all weekend. And I didn't, I'm not, I'm not tripping. I'm not worried about a thing. It's USB. It's plugged in. It's ready to go. That's right. And uh I keep it underneath the uh, passenger seat out of sight. Plus the USB cable just drops right down out of the console. So nobody knows it's there. I can't see it. I just enjoy the comments. Jimmy, is this a brand new Jeep? Nope. How old? It smells brand new. Yes, it does. And thank you for that. And thank you, Eden Pure. Eden Pure Thunderstorm, three-pack special right now. Get three. Save $200. Free shipping. It's that simple to do. Kill all those viruses and funky things inside of your car. It's the best way to go. And uh, I, I don't know who the fade or not was, but I did see the post. I got it. It's right here. Jimmy's right. Save $200. Check this out. It's that cool. Promo code is Fader3. The links are below. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Yeah, that's right. Follow me right there on Twitter. The sandbox is hashtag F2B on, on Twitter. Ken Priest, are you coming on the cruise? Ken, I think Ken is indicating he's coming on the cruise with us. I think that is what Ken is indicating. Ken, you and I on a cruise ship, that is a scary thought, my man. We got to do that. Let's get to the breaking news because Zahi Haiwas is in the news. I don't know what you just want. What? Yes. Check this out. Zahi Haiwas, the previous minister of state, for Antiquities Affairs in Egypt is part of the Egypt-led team that undertook a high-profile excavation in Luxor's Valley of the Kings that allegedly uncovered amulets once owned by King Tut. And then Hiwas drops this bomb. Hiwas said that they have also unearthed the mummy of Queen Nefertiti. That's right. Quote, 
Zahi. I, I can't do a Zahi impression. Should I do it? In October, <laughs> we will be able to announce the discovery of Mummy Queen Nefertiti. That's right. He says he's going to do it next month in October. That's a direct quote. In October, we were able to announce the discovery of the mummy of Nefertiti. End quote. We shall see. All right. Also, archaeology in the news. Partially exposed human remains and rock art have been discovered on the banks of the Villa Canota River leading to Machu Picchu by archaeologists from the Decentralized Culture Directorate in Cusco. Archaeologist Francisco Huacaya said the images, including the sun and geometric shapes, were painted on different parts of a huge rock. He thinks they could be associated with guardian deities in the form of mountains and may have a funerary context. Very interesting. No images posted yet, but when they do, I'll get those to you. Um, Have you seen this video? I have. It's incredible. Because two extremely rare mega mouth sharks were captured on video off the coast of San Diego. David Stabil uh, was fishing with his friends, Val uh, uh, Casescu and Andrew Chang, about 30 miles offshore when they saw the mega mouth sharks. That's plural. In the videos, which were shared on Twitter and Facebook, the sharks can be seen slowly swimming very close to the boat. One swims closer to the surface, while the other can be seen a few feet below it, moving almost in the other's shadow. Mega mouth is a species of deep water shark that was only discovered in 1976 and is rarely observed by humans. They can grow up to 18 feet long and are usually found at depths between 3,000 and 15,000 feet. That's right, discovered 1976, United States Navy. A mega mouth shark got caught in a net, not a fishing boat. It was the U.S. Navy. I don't know what the net was doing in the water, but uh, it got tangled up, and uh, that's when the mega mouth was discovered, 1976. Incredible. That's right. With the addition, I just told you uh, that uh, Antarctica is back in the news. And I, I've, I've got to do Elon Musk news, right? So this time I'm combining the two. What? That's right. With the addition of the McMurdo station in Antarctica, SpaceX and Starlink now reaches all seven continents. Yesterday, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted that the high-speed internet service routed through Earth low Earth orbit is truly available globally. The service has just recently become active in Africa, starting in Mozambique and Nigeria, and is rolling out by the end of the year in the Philippines, and that will start making inroads into Southeast Asia. That's right, McMurdo Station. In Antarctica. That's nuts. Let's get this show cracking on this day in history. OTD 1957. The United States detonates a 1.7 kiloton nuclear weapon in an underground tunnel for the first time at the Nevada test site, just north of Las Vegas. Can you imagine back then? You know, 57, 58, 59, 60, Dean Martin, you know, the Rat Pack and all the other glamour that was going on in Las Vegas. And one of the things, you know, the casinos, right? Prime rib dinner for a dollar ninety nine. You would see the the billboards and uh you know, you would see how and nuclear test tomorrow night. We're having a party. People would gather and watch the nuclear tests going on a hundred miles away in the desert. That's just great. Honey, are you going to wear your black dress tonight? I am. And I got your mother's brooch on. It's so glamorous. 
you know, out there with their glasses on, <laughs> watching these things. Think about that. It's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Smoke a cigarette while you're watching the nuclear detonations, right? Drinking a martini. Good times. Fader fact. All right, here you go. This is a good one. They're all good, but this is extra special. The cornea of the eye is the only part of the body that doesn't have blood. No blood supply. No blood in the cornea. That's right. It gets its oxygen directly from the air. And that is your fader fact. Why don't they do that with skin then? Why doesn't, why does, <laughs> why don't they, why don't they do that? Yeah, whoever designed us. But yeah, the cornea. Yeah, that's a good fader fact right there. You can drop that one at a party. Hopefully, you know, who you make the bet with doesn't listen to Fade to Black, which is the majority of the planet. So you could probably win, you know, quick quick Hunsky, maybe drinking game. Huh? Oh, drinking game with Fader Facts. Ooh. I like that. All right. Tonight. Very special guest, very special week here on Fade to Black. Tonight, Geraldine Orozco was with us. I was uh, just with Geraldine um, in Sedona. And uh, we, later on that night, uh, I watched her entire presentation. It was, it was great. But later that night, we were a guest at a house. And uh, Geraldine and I had an opportunity uh, to just... Uh, get some alone time in and just sit and talk. And we did for, for about an hour. And uh, I, I just find her so, so dynamic. And so um, uh, her, the way that she presents and, and shares her information, it's just so compelling. She's just an amazing speaker. And, and I told her that I said, I just want you on fade to black every month. Okay. We can do that. Well, uh, we're kicking that off tonight. Geraldine Roscoe is with us tomorrow night. Christina Gomez. Now, I realize I'm on Christina's show every single week, and I have so much fun doing it. Why isn't she ever on Fade to Black? You know, why is it that that I get to enjoy this and 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 going on her? Shouldn't she have some fun? Shouldn't she be able to come on Fade to Black? She should. So tomorrow night, Christina Gomez is here. Wednesday night, producer, director, journalist, writer, Melissa Tittle, right here with us tomorrow night. I've been working with Melissa for a number of years. She's great. She's amazing. She's uh, not only super smart, but um, she, she asks questions, and then she turns around and makes movies about it or TV series. Um, she is so good at what she does. She's one of the very best. And that's what we're doing this week. All right. We have Geraldine with us. We have Christina with us. We have Melissa with us. Three of the very best and brightest this week here on Fade to Black. Thursday night is another Fader night with open lines all night long. All right. Now let me hit this River Moon coffee. Again, I've been drinking it through the whole show. You noticed, right? So good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, so this batch, French press, this batch, when you French press it, you can do a couple of things. Oh, I mean, immediately, you, you French press, it can be ready in five seconds, 10 seconds. Depends on how strong. And if you just let the French press sit, I give it 10 minutes and just let it sit and the grounds start to pass through it and collect on the bottom. Because when you first do it, they're, they're all floating they're at the top and you got to push through it. But if you let it sit and then, and then when you push it, it just goes right straight to the bottom. And then when you pour it, it's dark, <laughs> like really dark. All right.
Fade to Black Blend. River Moon Coffee. I like my coffee dark. I do. I'm, it's my normal voice. That's what's really weird. This is just my normal voice. The quieter I get, you know, in volume, this thing happens. And when I get louder, it 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 it, it tries to go up in pitch, but it can't. It tries. It tries. It tries. See, that's as high as I can go right there. It tries. There you go. Rivermoonwellness.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. All right. You ready? Uh, so, so, I just spent the weekend with the Forbidden Team. That's right, Billy Carson, Elizabeth Hoekstra, and uh, their four guests, Matthew, Percy, Sheena, and Brian. Matthew came in from New Jersey. Percy came in from Mississippi. Sheena came in from Texas. And Brian was here in Southern California in Pasadena. And um, it was it was amazing. So we got, we got together for a sky watch. And that sounded weird. Wow. Some action going on. Okay, anyway. Um, this is what we did. So we went out Saturday night. We were in Joshua Tree. And and had a sky watch, saw a few things. It was cool. We it was just great just sitting there. We had a great dinner. We went out, got back, gathered chairs in a circle, had all the gear, and we just sat and talked about life and and watched things in the sky. But Saturday night, whew, man. Okay, so we uh we get everything together. It's the gear. We got a couple of vehicles, um, and we head over to Giant Rock. And uh, when we got there, there wasn't that many people. I was expecting, you know, because there's a lot of off uh, desert uh, vehicles out there where they race in the desert and lots of uh, uh, camping and RVs and, and all of that. I've been out there with, you know, there's been 30, 40, 50 of them there. There wasn't uh, when we pulled up yet. Anyway, so uh, we get together and next to Giant Rock, and I'm looking, where should we set up the chairs tonight? And here's Giant Rock down here, and it's taking up half of the sky, so we can't sit next to it. But next to Giant Rock, off out a uh, quarter mile or so, is this, this hill. And it's got a steep clip face on the front. And you can see these, you know, ATVs and, and dune buggies and stuff climbing up the hill. I was like, that's where we're going to go. We're going to sit on the top of that. I'm going to take the Jeep up there. And the thought popped in my head. And then I was trying to talk myself out of it. Uh, it looks pretty dangerous. And then I just kind of mentioned it. And it was like, yeah, man, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And we did. So uh, we loaded up the Jeep. And I thought I was going to ride it by myself. Everybody's jumping in like, let's go. And and we do. Up the side of this cliff and the jeep made it and, and stuff but you know that stuff it's a little uh you know that's white knuckle you know uh uh driving but we got up to the top pulled pulled the jeep over set up all of the chairs and now we're looking down below and you can see the little campfires giant rock which is ginormous is this big way down below in the valley and we're looking at the campfires. Some people were lighting off fireworks below so it was really cool but so we set and immediately as the sky starts to darken up, the Milky Way just lit up. I, I've, it's zero. There's no light pollution out there because there's no lights. We're in the middle of the desert. And, uh, and the Milky Way, and out of the gate, no night vision, naked eye, stuff moving in all directions, by the way. And we sat there. Now, I am going to do a guesstimate here. And say that between 8 and 10 o'clock, a two-hour stretch, between 8 and 10, uh, hundreds, hundreds. 
And there were things going on that I've never seen before. I was watching things pass each other like this. Very unusual to see that. Saw that three times, actually. I saw another one overtake, right? They were, and he just passed him. And then the one in back stopped. And he kept going. That was naked eye, too, by the way. Crazy. Night vision, binoculars, everything that we had set up. Everybody was seeing something at every minute of, of the hour. 60 minutes in an hour. You've got six people there. Everybody's seeing something. You do the math. It was crazy. And then there were times. Now, look, and I was telling everybody, east, west, you know, you see this orientation. You know, it's probably a satellite and things. But when you see stuff going in another direction or change directions. And there were moments. Yeah, Cassandra, that's pretty close. That's what I did in the Jeep. I, I, I like that. Thank you. There were moments four things in, in, but they're all Chris going in different directions and just watching them merge. It's like, here they come, here they go. It was nuts. It was fun. It was fun. Um, one pretty low, by the way, I love the really low altitude stuff, low and slow and big um, that just came across the sky. Like I said, naked eye, this wasn't, uh, I would say half of the night, uh, wasn't aided with night vision, didn't need it. E everything was just uh, right there above us. It was incredible. And uh, I asked all of you to come along with us. Don't forget that. But um, next time, do not miss the trip. I, I can't wait to go back to Giant Rock um, and go back to that exact same spot, take the Jeep up the side and and park at the top and and look down at everybody. It was just incredible. Perfect night, perfect temperature, perfect group. And of course, I want to thank Billy Carson and Elizabeth Hoekstra for being amazing host and and just a, a, a you know a, just two great people, but amazingly fun and funny. It was just, it was just a perfect weekend. So there you go. And I knew what was happening this week on fade to black, uh, after that weekend there, and then turning around and coming back and doing this week and hanging out with all of you, uh, life is pretty good around here. All right. So let's take a break. My guest tonight is Geraldine Orozco. She's going to be with us tonight. We're going to be talking about making contact and what to do with it when and if you do. Tomorrow night, Christina Gomez is here. That's right, Gomez. Gomez in the house. Wednesday night, producer, director, journalist, and writer, Melissa Tittle, is with us for the first time. Thursday night's another Fader night with open lines all night long. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back with Geraldine after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who. And you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. 
Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free, and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. You have an interest in the paranormal? Then you'll love the UnXNetwork.com. The X is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural, strange, and mysterious, like UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, and so much more. From hosts like Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and Christina Gomez, visit the UnXNetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the X. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UNX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcast. It's time. It's new. It's the X. 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 Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Manson. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What an amazing week uh, we've got coming up. Uh, you know, tonight, Geraldine Orozco is with us. Uh, tomorrow night, Christina Gomez. And Wednesday night is Melissa Tittle. And then Thursday night is another Fader night with open lines all night long. But tonight, Geraldine is back with us. We're going to be talking about making contact. And what you should do with the info, if you get it. What, what, what goes down? What do you do? We're going to be talking about all of that and much more tonight. She's a clinical hypnotherapist, CHT, um, epigenetic uh, psychotherapist, an MT uh, meditation teacher, an NLP uh, neurolinguistics practitioner. Geraldine, way too many uh, <laughs> big words for me. I got a small mind. Speaking of that, mindfulness-based stress reduction therapist, MBSR Qigong teacher, and owner of the Bay Area Meditation in San Francisco, she offers virtual corporate meditation programs internationally, and uh, she has 15 years of experience in the arts of holistic energy healing with certifications of advanced uh, healing, quantum energy healing, and studied for several years with a shamanic energy healer in 2013. Geraldine experienced a life-changing consciousness, conscious interdimensional contact experience that resulted in the activation of the psychic abilities of the multidimensional body and the energy field. She is now dedicated to the dissemination of knowledge of bi uh, biophysical architecture, hybridization programs, and the re-examination of the common dogma of human genetic timelines, historical recording, and the advanced healing of human biological structure. 
founder of the hybridmother.com, an international research and support group for experiencers and contactees of identification phenomena. She is on the board of directors of OPIS, the Organization for Comprehension and Support of Paranormal Sciences. And she also appears in the 16-time award-winning documentary called Extraordinary, The Seating. She also appears on Travel Channel's UFO Witness with Ben Hansen and singer Demi Lovato's new series, Unidentified. Her website is GeraldineOrosco.com. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black my good friend, the one and only Geraldine Orosco. Geraldine, good evening. How are you? Hi, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me, Jimmy. It's so much so much pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's funny. I kind of said um, at the beginning of the show, that you and I, you know, we had a chance to hang out in Sedona and it was great. But later on that night, um, you and I, uh, we were at, uh, invited to a house. Pretty, that house was too small though. See, <laughs> it, it was gorgeous. It was huge. <laughs> it was too small, too small for me. I mean, my, my stuff is bigger. Oh, but, wow. Okay. Uh, anyway, God, that house was amazing. Anyway, so we're there. And you and I had a chance uh, to, uh, you know, get some alone time in and sit and talk. And one of the things that I had said to you and you agreed to was like, we got to do this every month on Fade to Black. Why, why are we wasting time? Why are we messing around? Well, hopefully tonight is the kickoff of uh, many, many more conversations uh, between the oh, two of us. That would but, be fun. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see you. Um, can, I, can I actually start off with... Um, uh, a weird, well, not weird. No, what, what's weird on Fade to Black? Uh, not much, but um, but but kind of a weird uh, thing for me to say to somebody. But it's this: you um, had a. I'm going to do air quotes. You had a normal life, right? Yeah, things were fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> things were just fine. Everything's cool. You got a great career, professional. This everything is is clicking on all cylinders and then the car goes off the cliff. Right. And, um, uh, things changed for you. Uh, do you miss, uh, you know, the, the air quotes, the normal thing, um, you know, where so many people think that that is the key to life is just, you know, being straight, <laughs> if you know what I mean? And then, and things have changed. Do you miss the the normal world? Um, well, you know that's an interesting question. I think I think I am living um, what is normal, right? Because um, I think really early on, at least in two thousand eight, when I first funded Bay Area Meditation, um, I actually went into meditation looking for these questions, these important questions about what are we, what is the purpose of our existence, and questioning really the routine, because I had just uh, quit a uh, corporate world and started my own business. And it, my soul was dying in the corporate world, because it was just monotony, monotony, monotony. I was not interested in the career I was in. And I was I was dying from the inside, you know, so when I quit that job and started my own business, I went into the creative field uh, in, in into uh, event planning. And and at the same time, started learning about meditation. So this is where I started to change my life. And I started to ask questions. If I had the education, the career, the family, everything that I was supposed to do, that I checked off all the boxes of the regular perfect life. Why wasn't my life actually perfect? You know, why wasn't I happy? I had everything I wanted, but actually what I had, what we think as of normal, when we look around, there's actually a lot of dissatisfaction. A lot of yeah. empty feelings and 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 loneliness and disconnect. Actually, you know, it, it, I, I, it's one of my most fascinating uh, thought processes that I go through. That and I understand that that's your bliss and that's your happiness. Fine, go for it. Right, that that's cool. But so many mm -hmm. don't stop and contemplate the world. Mm -hmm. Right, they're, they're stuck in the thing, and they're happy. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, that's cool, but but they don't. Th you know what I mean? They don't dream. They don't think about uh, what else is possible, and and I find that boring. But but you know what I mean? It, it's it's just crazy yeah. to me that uh, that so many out there could enjoy 
learning and finding out about things that that are around them all the time. And it's the little things, coincidences and synchronicities and your dreams and 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 other just and that's the basic stuff. Right. But they don't even go there. Right. right. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, I mean, I'm a lifelong contactee, but I didn't realize that my experiences that I was, was having were actually uh you know, connected with ET contact. I was, I didn't understand that yet. I didn't make the connection. And it wasn't until I started to meditate really for hours at a time. And eventually I was, I took time off in 2013 to meditate maybe up to nine, 10 hours a day for about three, four months that I began to really question not only like my personality, myself, you know, why, why did I end up being who I was? I began to deprogram some programs that were handed down through mother and father's side, you know, and so kind of unpacking all of that really made me realize that I hadn't even known what questions to ask. I didn't even know I had permission to ask about whether my life was uh, making me happy. You know, was it okay to follow along with the nine to five job to the career, follow along? Who created these structures? You know, do we really agree with these structures? So that's kind of where those kind of started to fall apart. And what I discovered was that, you know, major programming that we take on through culture, religion, society, politics, everything kind of plays a role in, in, in the way that we see our, ourselves in the world. And really, we end up being like masks. We end up wearing just masks. And really, the true self isn't really even expressed. We don't even know. We don't discover that true self until we do that internal work. Um, so I think it was at that point when I finally realized that, you know, I, I came to a, a moment of neutrality where all of these masks started to fall off. And I began to question, well, what's what's beyond this? What's beyond social structures? What's beyond, uh, you know, education and, and religion and culture? How did we, our society end up to where it is today? And it became very painfully vivid and and real that the amount of suffering that we experience on earth why are we choosing to live these kinds of lives that create such dissatisfaction and disconnection and even then feel so uh, have such a hard time asking these very hard questions about for example what is love what does it mean to exist so um in 2013 uh as a result of this kind of meditation um and I experience, and coming into this kind of neutral state is where I experienced this conscious contact experience, where um, a Friday night in October, a brilliant bright light comes into my room, and begins to um, light up every single wall of the room to the point where you know I couldn't I couldn't um, stay in bed anymore. I wanted to go see what it was. So I get out of bed and I go to the window and I look outside, and the light is so bright that my entire body paralyzes and I'm taken out of the room on top of the garage. And I am faced in front of this incredibly white light that takes up the entire block. And from the white light, these beings come out. And right in that moment, these tall grays, uh, gray-like beings, about seven foot tall, this is the moment that my paradigm kind of shattered, you know. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I had already been going through micro- micro existential crises after my own meditation work but this is like this really took it to the next level and um i i began to remember these experiences as, as a child and and it, you know i i went into the craft with these beings uh, they spoke to me telepathically and the craft is almost like this conscious uh very responsive craft that that kind of responds to every step you take and it's also very holographic and they would create these holograms inside the craft as i walk inside i can see the curvature of the craft going to the right and to the left so we go to the left and as we're curving down they create this hologram where everything begins to shift in color and it looks like a, a green grass and a blue sky and I'm being brought into this obtuse building where, it, you know, clearly it's a hologram. They're covering the actual uh, structure of the craft. But as I turn around, I'm seeing these two greys walk in front of me with my aunt in her nightgown, unconscious, and just gliding in front of me. And when I try to call out her name, uh, you know, they immediately 
remove this um, imagery, this hologram from around me. And they show me three grays that begin to present to me these uh, this prism. And this prism has eight layers to it. Every single one of those layers had some information for me. So this is where I began to download all kinds of information about, first they showed me alien language. And the alien language, the more I would try to uh, focus on it and try to understand what it was saying, the, the least I would be able to understand. But the moment I would just kind of relax and see the letters, these symbols that were very much a mixture of mathematic and uh, strange geometric type symbol, symbols, um, I began to have these telepathic images come into my mind. And I realized that the way that they were communicating to me was very um, universal. It's like they speak in universes. And that was another moment of where your reality also begins to shatter, you know? Yeah. Can I, can I jump in? Yeah. So what you're suggesting is no matter who you are, just like on planet earth, right? No matter what language you're speaking or another planet, you are going to understand what is being presented here. That's what you mean by universal. Well, yes, in a way also, but there's, there's this, this is how it was. It was myself, this, everyone that was there with me in that space, in that room, in that craft, uh, the city, the, the country, the world, the galaxy, and then the universe that you're in. This is how thought forms were created. It's almost mm -hmm. as if it included everything around it in that way. Every dot meant something. It changed the meaning of it. So, I mean, it's a completely ex expansive way of communicating that you, you know, we don't communicate like that. We barely get, you know, some communication across about what we're experiencing, or we can't even express how we're feeling sometimes. Um, but this communication is just so complex and uh, very connected to many aspects of your experience, you know, did just to get one done. Did you... Did you have a, a problem understanding or, or did you absorb it? Yeah, so I think at that moment, um, the images that started to come into my mind were images that were super complex. So for example, uh, I remember seeing the earth. I remember seeing myself in the earth. I remember uh, seeing the roles that souls would play on earth. Um, and then they would they would show me other planets simultaneously in my mind just and I'm watching I'm watching these symbols and I, these are the pictures it, very complex things moving very quickly um, and then I would and then they would show me some kind of numerical sequence that would have to do with the time and space that they were that this event was located and the role that I would be playing the role that other people would be playing how we're interconnected um, I guess the next step in in this event and how it would affect other people this is this is like one thought would include all of this you know so it was I guess it was like a major download of information and at that moment I didn't quite understand what I was being shown until many years later mm -hmm. and i can share with you about that in just a moment but it was it was very amazing to have you know your mind just expanded in that way because we don't communicate like that when um uh i saw your presentation i mean we've done things uh, over the years but that was one of the first times when i was able to and i don't get a chance to do this too often with anybody um, to sit for two or three hours and and listen to your entire presentation from beginning to end. And uh, and so what I, my comment to that is, um, the information uh, and the way that you present it is very fluid, but it's stuff that um, I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. And it is complex, and you do have to in your presentation, because of the the type of information that it is, you've got to be able to explain this to everybody uh, and have them absorb. And I felt like I did. And I remember you walked out the stage, and and the two of us we walked outside, and you said, what? "I said that was amazing, and that 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 was pretty cool." But here's the thing. Um. I turned to you and, and said, everybody there was focused, right, for two, two and a half hours and and uh, taking in uh, what you were presenting to them. Do you feel that from the podium? Do you feel the brain power from everybody? Just absolutely, right? Nobody is is 
is, you, you know what I mean, losing focus. They are completely um, into uh, what you are presenting. Yes, I, I do notice that. I know sometimes these concepts can be very heavy. I know my presentations can be heavy sometimes. Very um, heavy. Very. But, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is that I think the way that this information is kind of delivered is not just visually, but I also feel that it's energetic. And I, I do get that feedback, too, that some people, uh, you know, they can receive the information. Also, my videos on my YouTube channel, I talk about these topics. I try to go very in depth into these topics. And I think I think it's time for us to, to kind of shift our perspective in the way that we see and, and, and experience things in a broader way that is a little bit more inclusive of many different aspects that are important to understanding who we are as humans because we are very multidimensional but up until now the way that we see things the way things are presented to us it's very one-dimensional and we forget ourselves in that process so i think the reason why i do presentations like this is hopefully for people to remember themselves and to experience what they're receiving and to be able to find themselves in that information because the information is combining both organic uh, a little bit of science, a little bit of physics, and also spiritual, right? And I think that's really the most important thing uh, that we understand that we are we are energy, we are life force, and that communication um, it it's not just through verbal communication. It is a mul multiple senses that are being involved in that in that kind of communication. And, yeah, and, and, so I'm hoping yeah. that's how people are receiving it. <laughs> well, because one of the reasons why it's so well received is you do have a lot of illustrations. You've got a lot of math on the screen. You've got a lot of uh, supporting multimedia uh, to go through all of this. But you're right. Um, it, it's heavy. But I think that everybody realizes very quickly, okay, this is this is this is special. I need to stay focused. And then they can go back and watch it again and watch it again. You know, do what you're gonna do in real time, but uh, uh, go back and 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 absorb it again and again. Um, and I want to go back to your uh, point. Um, when this happened in uh, you know with the with the three tall grays, um, your previous contact experiences uh, over your lifetime, same same group, right? Mm, great question. Yeah. Uh, no, many, many different kinds of groups, actually. Um, and uh, th this is very interesting because it plays a very key role in understanding the hybridization program. Um, I'm a part of four hybridization programs. One hybridization is a Draco reptilian. Uh, the second one is a Pleiadian group, which is this group that presented the children to me in this experience. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is a reptilian group, and the other is is a terrestrial group, so involving military aspects. Um, and so at different stages of my life, since I was a child, since the age of five, I had experiences with missing time. And mostly in those missing time experiences were connected to Draco reptilian uh, kind of experiences, as well as military um, more recently, military were involved over the past probably about six, six years now. Um, but uh, the way I understand the hybridization program is not just about hybrids. It's also about cloning, cloning programs that are being taken place. And uh, my initial question after this contact was, you know, are these groups connected? You know, they seem to have the same interest in, in genetics in the human genetic, you know, what makes the human so special? Why was I uh, special or chosen for these, these kinds of experiences? Um, so at different stages from the age of five, the age of seven, the age of eight, the age of uh, 16, uh, then it was, I think, um, 22, 24, 34. Those are the main uh, memories where they were vivid experiences that were both combined with physical side effects. So for example, I would have missing time, marks on my body, uh, missing time, uh, I became sick for a week with some anomalous illness that the doctor could not identify. Um, I also became pregnant without being partnered, uh, being virgin um, at the age of 16 when I was in South America and at the age of 18 when I was here in, in the U US again. And these, both these times, after having these vivid missing time experiences, uh, let me just, for context, I was walking home from school one night, 
And as I'm walking on the cobblestone floor, the floor goes black all of a sudden, and I'm brought into this room. Uh, I, I just find myself walking into this dark space. There are these incredible beings on the side of me that are very reptilian type beings. And there is this metallic chair, very modern and minimalistic type chair where I'm made to sit down. And in that experience, there is an insemin insemination that is mechanical. And I'm feeling the sensations of this insemination occurring, but then I black out and I find myself in bed at like three in the morning and I wake up uh, at the age of 16 and for the first time in my entire life feeling the feeling of being aroused. And I'm very confused. I, I never felt that feeling before. I wasn't sure what was occurring. And then I go back to sleep and then I was sick for about a week after that. And my uncle who was a doctor thinks that I have maybe a stomach flu, they, of course, it didn't occur to them that I was pregnant because, you know, I was a virgin and come from a very um, a Catholic background. So very, very conservative, you know. And so at, and as a result of this, I had a miscarriage experience, but the fetus was missing. I didn't know what was happening. But when I went to the doctor, they did some x-rays and found out that I had these strange formations inside of the uterus. And the doctor said, you know, have you been pregnant? Have you had kids before? You know, th these kinds of markings are markings that would occur for someone that already had, you know, several children. Right. You know, so right. that's when things started to kind of uh, not make sense, but you still don't really combine. You don't make the connection with ET contact yet. Right. Let me let me jump in here. Uh, we've got about 90 seconds and we, we can pick up after the break. But um, certainly you've got to have a conversation with your parents about this too as well. And you got to go, dad, I'm telling you. Right. And, and, and he's saying, well, the doctor says, and your mom, this is now uh, something that you have to deal with. I can only imagine the drama in the family. How did you deal with that? Well, you know, during that first experience, nobody really thought that I would be pregnant because, I mean, I, I we very, very innocent. I mean, you know, we I didn't even go out. It was just at school and then home. So mm -hmm. that it didn't even bring up that thought. But when I had that side effect and when the doctor said that, you know, they just thought, hmm, maybe it's something that's hereditary. Maybe it just passed down the family, you know. Right, right. At, at the later time, at the age of 18, that's that's when things started to get interesting because I, I became pregnant a couple times without being partnered after this. And every time that it would happen, um, you know, I was at the age of 18, I was still young, still with my parents um, and still having these side effects. There was a lot of confusion, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, uh, not sure what to what to say, what to talk, what to share. You know, so it was very stressing. Later on, at the age of 24, became pregnant again, wasn't partnered. But this time, you know, it was like this very strange confusion, like what's happening to you? The doctor said, you know, do you want to have a child? You must really, really want children, you know, because when you want children, sometimes you create that hormone in the body. Right. Um, but this was literally becoming pregnant for maybe up to three months and then having a miscarriage without the fetus. And, you know, the, the doctor, the gynecologist can say it's a blighted ovum or something like that happened. But the interesting thing is that these are not just this kind of miscarriage can happen to anyone you know it's not it's not so rare but what is interesting is that it's combined with these contact experiences so i had very vivid dreams about being on a slab of a metallic slab being uh surrounded by these lights and these beings around me and then immediately the next day having marks on the body exactly in the places where i had the dreams and and where they were you know uh, 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 touching and 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 uh, being close to my body, so um, for me, I still didn't think that there was a connection. I wasn't sure. I didn't understand how the non-physical dream state could manifest into the physical in this way. You know, so but, it uh, uh, hold, hold on. We got to take a break. <laughs> got to take oh, a break. Yes, yes. Yeah, let's do that right here. This is okay. fade to black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church tonight. Our guest is Geraldine Orozco. We're talking about making contact uh, tonight. And if it happens, what do you do with it? We're going to discuss all of that and much more with Geraldine after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black.
This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNXDB, BX. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses Oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Geraldine Orozco is with us, back with us. It's been too long, Geraldine. It has been way too long. And, uh, you know, um, I was thinking uh, during the break, I was like, how do we meet? 
right? It was so long ago. I think it was Alba. I think it was Alba Wyman introduced us, right? Oh. Am I am, am I right in saying that? Um, somewhere around that time, but you and I met in person when we were in, I think, Pasadena, when we went to that art gallery. Oh, uh, remember? Yeah. I think that was the first time we met actually oh, yeah. in person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, that was a long time ago. Um, yeah, that was a while ago. That's so, right. But yeah, uh, you may have met me through Alba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I met you through Alba. Um, going back to where we left off, and we've got, uh, uh, so many things to touch upon, but uh, I want to go back for this. Um, I like the way you say pregnancy without a partner, right? That's that's a good way to put it. Um, the, you go through this uh, a few times and you have these miscarriages uh, without a fetus. And you had said that um, it's, it's not that uncommon, right, for women to go through this. Mm -hmm. if, if a woman does go through with this, um, would you suggest that Maybe they think about the past or any strange events in the past that that they may have just naturally dismissed and, and not thought much about and that there may be some kind of connection. You know, um, it's it's you know, we can always try to connect things in our world. I think that it's very important to understand that there is. I think the most important thing is to understand the spiritual connection behind all of these kinds of things, because uh, they can get very complex very quickly. Not all miscarriages, obviously, are going to be connected to this um, to this agenda in a way. But I also want to say that after a lot of research and looking at these and also many cases of women from around the world that are experiencing the hybridization program, the kind of parallels, not just in the kind of relationships and partnerships that they're choosing, mm -hmm. um, play a role in this. Because the hybridization program is not just about creating these concepts of alien babies, okay, hybrid babies. We are actually hybrids. In fact, we are a product of hybridization ourselves since the origin of life seeding on this planet. And so this is something that we go really deep into the topic and understanding. And even, even us, from the origin of time, from the first genetic code, uh, there has been um, genetic mutations in blood types, blood, li blood lines, and certain bloodlines that have been preserved in historically. All of this is part of a kind of genetic modification of the human race. And we currently exist in a kind of genetic modification still, even now, through eugenics programs that have been present for a very long time. So this goes a little bit into the deeper sides of the hybridization program. It's not just that it's occurring interdimensionally, it's actually also happening in the physical. And we can go into that, but every single family lineage, the people that we date, the people that we unite with and, and marry and have families with, in a way, these unions are not just created randomly. We are somewhat united by vibrational frequency at a very high level. And in that agreement, there are agreements that are made in order to participate in some of these hybridization programs. And we begin to see these patterns because what we discover is that the hybridization program actually goes down ancestrally. So for example, in my family, um, let's see, every single one of the women in my family have had contact and had these kinds of experiences. And it wasn't until I came public that we started to, to talk about them. And my clients that I work with for the past six years, I keep hearing this over and over again. So um, there have also been other separate studies outside of my work that have also talked about this. Wait, wait, wait. So Thanksgiving dinner, right? You guys are sitting around. So what's new? Well... <laughs> Is, is it like that? Are you guys that open? <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, I think that when the documentaries came out, um, you know, <laughs> right. it was inevitable. You know, you can't really hide that anymore. Right. But uh, I will say after my contact experience in 2013, up until 2017, uh, you know, I never shared this with anyone except my two parents, uh, my partner at the time, and then 
a person from MUFON, which was my first contact into this whole world, you know. Um, so that's where things inevitably became very quickly public, you know, not even giving me yet time to process yet. So I, I went through very quickly through the learning curve of how to handle all of this. And um, also researching, you know, through my personal experiences, what, what was happening. I think if I didn't have the spiritual foundation that I had, I think it would have been very overwhelming and difficult for me to handle not just my own experiences, but other other people in my family sharing their experiences. But I think at that point, I, get, I came to a point of understanding through Alba Wyman with her hypnotherapies that I, I did with her really helped me understand what was happening, you know, in a, in a profound way. Can I, can I ask you something? Um, I, I don't want to say when or where um, uh, because that just wouldn't be cool. But at the art gallery, uh, when you and I were hanging out, in that art gallery was a model of uh, Whitley Strieber's communion, okay? And, and, and that's sitting there along with the cover uh, from communion and sitting there. Um, when, when you see stuff like that, uh, does, it, does it have an effect on you? It, it used to, yes. It, it used to at first, very much so. Very powerful uh, effect. Um, and I think after my first hypnotherapy is when I was first very, very sensitive to seeing things like pictures of greys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I really wanted to stay away from some some contactees, you know, they, they, they fall in love with the whole idea of these gray images and they use it a lot. You know, they, pr they promote that. But also we have to understand that there's been a lot of influence of social engineering as well, not just from the CIA, but also historically about ET contact. And I really want to stay away from that um, because people that are, you know, contactees, I, I was never interested in sci-fi before I got into this, you know, before I actually saw these beings. So for me, it was very paradigm shifting what I was seeing, what I was experiencing. Um, and I believe that the more that we stay away from entertainment industry, we'll be able to create a nice, clear picture of what these beings actually are representing to us. You know, it's, they're very... Um, there's many different species that we seem to have experiences with from Pleiadian humanoids to Arcturians to reptilians to Lyrans. Um, they represent something. And the way that I see them is more of a range of vibrational frequency. It's not easy to just compartmentalize the species and say, these are these and these are that, because within them, there are many mixtures. They are also hybrids. And in fact, we ourselves are a cocktail of, of these, high, of these uh, different species, these different lineages. Um, in fact, if we go all the way back to the very origin of time, how the human race came to be, if we look at the book of Enoch, for example, that talks about how Sophia breathes life into Yeldabaoth. Yeldabaoth creates the Archons and the fallen angels and these Anunnakis. And um, from there, that union of these beings with the human gene, with the human genetic code, is where we began to create uh, these lineages. So, um, and from there, many different species were descending as well. Okay, so we are we are a cocktail of these genetic lineages. And what I have discovered is that, in fact, most of our contact experience that we have that we recall is an expression of the genetic lineages that we are made up of. So if you're having contact with Lyrans, with Greys, with reptilians, chances are that you have that within your DNA. I've always found it interesting um, when I hear and read um, uh, accounts such as yours. And then when we speak about, you know, the deep past, um, that that's our community talking and it's great. And it's interesting. Then you go to what is taught in school, mm -hmm. right? It's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So they literally say, well, you know, 200,000 years ago, uh, homo sapien sapien, uh, the, the DNA was altered and we went from 48 chromosome pairs to 46 and it doesn't make any sense to have that altering um, in our DNA. But then we changed in complexion. We lost our body hair. Our forehead became flat. We're beautiful, right? We, we don't make any sense uh, compared to everything else on planet Earth, but we just appeared 200,000 years ago. Well, that's exactly what the Sumerian tablets say. 
<laughs> right? Yes, it's exactly. Like, mm -hmm. And many, many yeah. tablets. I mean, we have the, the Emerald Tablets, we have the, uh, the story of Gilgamesh. Many of these ancient scriptures um, all around the world are depicting these storylines. Yeah, it's, it, it's fascinating to me. Fascinating. Yes. So, okay. It's not just women, though. Right, exactly. It's not just women. And and I know that there's some men out there going, oh, I'd volunteer for an alien hybrid program. You know, sign me up. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's just not um, a feminine, a female uh, situation here when we're talking about hybrid programs. Um, and when this when men are involved is it the same sequence of events and what is the intention in the end mm -hmm. okay so uh the sequence of events for women let me first point that out is uh usually uh implantation between the first seven years of life from the womb until seven years uh the the person will experience some kind of experiences where they are being implanted with either um, what we call implants. It's a combination of their DNA, this bio-organic, multidimensional kind of uh, attachment in the body. Okay, their implants, sometimes people actually see metallic implants in their body, but they're more etheric rather than just material. So um, the next phase would be insemination. Usually these, these implants will let them know when the body is ready for insemination for women. And so when they have the experience of insemination, it can either be mechanical, organic, which means that it's with another human or mm -hmm. another being, uh, and it's a very physical union. They will liter literally experience a kind of physical union. Also, um, the experience can be uh, etheric, very etheric in nature. Um, the third is military, which is more of a cloning program that takes data, DNA data from the physical body and utilizes that for the cloning. So the next stage would be the gestation process. And for the female, it's usually about three months. It doesn't usually go longer than that when it's an etheric program or interdimensional program. And this is when they're going to have the miscarriage without the fetus. But there are also, of course, as we know, uh, the other hybridization, which is terrestrial, where the humans are born, right? And it's our children, children that are born, children that are born with memories of their past lives, um, you know, these very high, high understanding of physics, of, of, of interdimensional awareness. They remember their star families uh, at the age of five or six, they're talking about that, uh, as well as advanced physics and sciences. And Mary Rodwell uh, studies this, if you're interested in looking into that. Um, the next phase would be a presentation and this usually happens a little later on when the child is grown. Uh, there's a presentation experience where the child is shown to the mother or the father. Okay, and, so, you, and, you, and you did this. That's right. So every single one of these uh, stages I experienced and many of my contactees in the support group as well. So the men, for example, usually they will have implantation. They will have a kind of uh, experience where there's an extraction so semen is being extracted or any kind of genetic data. And that is utilized in order to incubate uh, or to create a, um, a fetus. You know, it can be through insemination of another partner. Sometimes they're also made to unite, to have a actual physical encounter. And it can be with a being or it could be with another human in these kinds of programs. All of it is very much um, designed. Um, and there is a presentation where the child, the children are then present presented to the male. Now, for the male, they also experience PTSD. Sometimes they have a very hard time uh, in their sexual life because it becomes very traumatic for them. Their experiences of contact have been so vivid that it's difficult for them to make sense of that experience and bring it into, into reality. Sometimes men will wake up uh, with uh, something that may feel like a wet dream, but you know, the, the experiences that they had before that were very vivid. Sometimes they will have markings on their body. And, um, you know, the dreams are about specifically being in contact, either in craft or um, with some kind of species. You know, they have some kind of experience that they're in a laboratory or in some kind of a hospital setting. Um, so this is what makes these experiences very specific. And there's many other details, everything from smells, sense that they're that they're feeling 
physical side effects, you know, and, and I will say that the majority of the people that I work with, these are not people that are on drugs, for example. Uh, in my experience, I am highly, highly sensitive to even alcohol. I cannot drink alcohol or take medications of any kind, um, much less any kind of recreational drugs. And I've, I've never done that. So uh, this, this, my clients also, the ones that are in my research, are also not under any kind of influence. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to see this. I have people that are working in Wall Street, doctors, um, you know, nurses, everyday, uh, you know, house, housewives that are experiencing things like this. The, um, uh, the ability to combine something with, uh, uh, you know, eggs or the opposite, um, human semen with some, in order for that to work, it's got to be a genetic match. The DNA has got to, we can't go and, and artificially inseminate dolphins or, uh, monkeys and, and have hybrids. It doesn't work that way. Um, things have to, uh, right. work with each other and mm -hmm. you have to have the right chromosome. pair. There's a lot of complexities there. But for this to work, that means um, these processes are either prepared, right? Exactly. And there's technology, mm -hmm. or yeah. there's already a genetic marker and footprint uh, that goes back a long ways that um, allows this to happen uh, naturally is the right word without uh, um, going in with the CRISPR and DNA snip snipping um, that this is something that can happen naturally. And that's pretty fascinating. Exactly. And I love that you brought that up because that's exactly what, you know, this research is showing that actually we have that DNA already in us, which allows us to mix this DNA with other, with other species. Um, I also see that in families, the contact that they're having are very similar. So for example, if a father has a lot of contact experiences with Lyran groups, uh, this is something that goes down their family lineage. If they're open enough to talk about their discovering, you know, I also saw this similar being, I also saw this uh, council. There's a lot of councils that people encounter and councils uh, tend to be a, uh, a collection of many different races. Um, what I'm noticing is that the, the kind of races that are making up this council are the are a genetic expression a holographic genetic expression of what's what's in the human that is actually experiencing that and we have many people work with many different councils there's also an aspect of interdimensionality which complicates things a little bit more that we need to understand that there are many dimensions as well in which these activities are taking place and they play a role in the kind of being that is being created some of these beings are physical children that are put back into the reincarnation cycle but some of these children are also interdimensional and they never they're never born physically you know so um there's also a reason for that and it has to do with the kind of access to the multi-dimensionality the multi-dimensional structure of this organism mm -hmm. uh, we are very multi-dimensional so certain things that we experience in the physical, we won't be able to experience in these other dimensions, which is why a lot of these experiences happen in dream time. When people are in dream time, when people are in the Akashic realms, they experience these kinds of contact experiences. And without the ability to have energetic hygiene that allows them to navigate these realms, sometimes they are a victim of a lot of parasitic interactions. So people have a lot of traumatic experiences. And, you know, this plays a huge role in the PTSD that they're experiencing in their everyday life. So, you know, there's a there's a profound connection between that and people's life really, you know, it really comes to a stop if they don't understand how to how to work with this, how to change it. Um, so, you know, and, and you can you can change it. You just need to understand who you are as a human, which is an incredibly powerful um, co-creator. You know, there's there's a key to understanding the role that you play in these hybridization programs. And we'll continue that after the break. Um, but let me ask you this before we get there. Uh, there are so many experiencers out there that will say, "My, it, it wasn't fun. It, it, it terrified me. Um, there are others out there that want to say that uh, it was just 
it was an amazing experience and they would love for it to happen again. Uh, what, what side are you on? Um, I think that these experiences when we're unconscious are going to happen whether you like it or not, whether you are aware of it or not. Um, I think that our states of awareness, our state of consciousness really defines what we do in, in this world, in the physical and in the non-physical. So in my opinion, we need to learn how to become conscious on all dimensional layers, in the physical, in our everyday life, as well as interdimensionally. And I think that we're moving in the direction of more interdimensional contact. Uh, this is going to become more mainstream, more people are going to come out, and we're going to need to prepare for that by learning how to navigate the interdimensional realm. But how do you, how do you, how do you stop the fear? Uh, well, you need to become friends with the unknown, you know, and this is something that this is what we're here to do. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a little bit harder to uh, do than just say. Yes, yes. And and this is the human experience. You know, we came into the three dimensional plane in order to experience duality, you know, sure. contrast. And so that that's what we're here for. It's through that experience that we begin to understand if we never overcame our fears of any kind, we would just be stagnant and die eventually. So I, I feel that it's part of the human evolution as a collective, not just individual, um, that we're learning how to do this. Um, if anybody, if you ever get the chance uh, to go and see Geraldine speak, do that. But if you can take things a step further and go up and just introduce yourself, um, it's 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 an amazing experience. Uh, she's she's um, how, what's the word? I don't want to embarrass you, but uh, you are your eyes are open. Well, they are. We can see that. But. <laughs> But it's a great experience uh, to just go and, and have a conversation with Geraldine. Uh, we need to take a break right here. We're going to continue uh, when we come back. And we're going to jump into uh, what is interdimensionality and and get some explanations going there, too, as well. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Geraldine Orozco. Making contact and what to do when it happens. More Geraldine after this short break. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio ¡Claro que sí! The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack A renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. rivermooncoffee.com Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. 
Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray Sobs, and I'm here to tell you about something I really think you're going to like. The Unex Network is a part of a larger group called Unex Media, and one of the things we offer is the quarterly Unex Magazine, which is available both in print and digital formats. This amazing magazine covers all aspects of the unexplained, and makes for a great coffee table periodical that is certain to spark enlightening conversations in your living rooms. We invite you to check out the latest digital issue for free. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash membership and fill out your free membership with your name and email and become a new free member. The new summer issue is now available and the theme is Time Anomalies, which includes a feature article written by our managing editor, Lee Spiegel. Just go to unxnetwork.com Network.com forward slash memberships. That's unxnetwork.com forward slash memberships and get your free e copy of the Unex magazine today. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, tonight, Geraldine Orozco. We're having one of those conversations. This is great stuff. And uh, take note and listen, because we're talking about making contact. And when it happens, what do you do with it? And uh, Geraldine, I wanted to share this with you. This weekend, um, I walked a labyrinth with some friends, right? Okay. A spiritual labyrinth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the center's is uh on a vortex right okay so anyway but what you do with that see i know this but i don't tell everybody else that is with us all right i just do something very simple don't talk walk get to the center come back out i'll see you on the other side that's all you got to do right that's all you got to do (laughs) and 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 um, so when uh, we we all do it, and it's so funny uh, when you enter. This is me. This is my head. Just walking between the rocks. Ain't anything going on. 
right? That's the challenge. That's what I say to myself, right? Okay, so the, you know, you, it, it, when you're walking out, you're like, <sighs> right? And so um, uh, I get out, I sit down, I'm first. I, I sit down, I wait for everybody, else. nobody's talking. Is everybody, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and this is what I, uh, and so when everybody was, was back down to earth, back in this dimension, I said, pretty profound, huh? And everybody t- just did the same thing. Man, wow. But, but this was my comment to them. You can take the straightest right person and, and, and have them walk that labyrinth and they come out a different person. Mm-hmm. It, it's a guarantee. If, if you want a, a little taste of, of this, of interdimensionality, of finding yourself, of seeing something that is not out there in the real world, walk a labyrinth and walk a special one, you know, that is indigenous, that is, uh, you know, at a sacred location. It's a profound experience, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. It was crazy. I love it, man. I just wow. love it. it. There was, um. I, okay, can I share something with you? Yeah, this, please. I, I, I haven't told anybody this. So I'm walking through the labyrinth. And, uh, and I was, I was coming, I I went to the center, did my blessing, you know, and uh, and now I'm walking out. And as I'm walking out, uh, you know, this whole thing takes about half hour, maybe an hour. Um, I'm coming and there's this little lizard. It's about this big on a rock looking at me just like this. Right. And I stop and I look, I, I, I'm not kidding. We talked to each other. <laughs> we did. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 For like for real. And I just stopped and and dude and it, you know, and uh uh and then I just walked on. But it was totally cool. It was totally I'm not gonna get into the yeah, conversation. Well, you're not gonna get into the conversation. No, no. <laughs> okay. Hey, he was a hipster though. I'm gonna uh, say that. He, okay. He, he was a hipster, <laughs> hipster lizard. But yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's so much fun uh to go through that and just um, you know, it's just you and your mind, you know, and if you're going to fib at that moment, right, whatever. You, and you know what I'm saying, right? You're fibbing to yourself. There's nobody else. So you're lying to yourself. <laughs> and that is another thing that you are confronted with is, is honesty. It's amazing. It's such an amazing experience. When you're communicating with, with nature, with beings, you mean? And, with and the- no, no, with yourself. Uh Okay. Yeah, when it's just you, when it's just you, you you don't have anybody around to impress or to to not impress, whatever, whatever, you know. Right. right. Um, no, when it's just you, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so um, I want to back up to uh, your present, your live presentation, not specifically, but but what I mean by that is when you are. Uh, speaking uh, about uh, their complex subjects, but you are also helping people understand what they may go through in a contact experience and then what you do with this information, right? It, it's up to you to choose to uh, to react to it and to absorb it and to do something with it or not. Right. Not all of it is there for you, right? But that's that's the intention of the presentation. When tonight there is somebody that that has had a contact experience, can you address that a little bit on what to do uh, with the information that you are given? Yeah. You know, as I mentioned right before we were going to break, one of the things that we're here to do as humans, just in general, is to learn how to become friends with the unknown, you know, and we have to do that in many different ways. I mean, we we do that in our everyday experiences, relationships. We're learning how to handle awkward relationships. We're learning how to communicate, express love, you know, uh, love ourselves. So this is just a, a lifelong experience. We And I'd like for you to think of ET contact in this same way. Okay, when you think of contact, and I don't like to call it ET contact, I don't believe it's extraterrestrial, I think it's interdimensional. Um, And when we when we begin to merge into these other dimensions for contact, whether you are conscious or you're in a dream state, um, you see, there are certain mechanics to the human. When we are in a state of fear, of anxiety, of survival, 
literally our entire multidimensional body, uh, because we are multidimensional, we, we, we contract. We actually are, the way that our body is constructed, we actually are a vortex. And when we have a lot of suffering and pain, anxieties, fears, traumas through life, this vortex kind of stops spinning and it keeps accumulating a lot of this heavy stuff. So we end up being, it's like you're carrying baggage, you know. So in your interdimensional contact, if you're carrying a lot of baggage in your everyday life experiences, you haven't dealt with your trauma, chances are the kind of contact that you're going to have is going to be pretty traumatic and you're going to uh, experience a lot of very helpless experiences where you're going to probably feel very overwhelmed so there is a connection your spiritual work is very much parallel to this kind of contact experiences if you begin to help yourself healing some of this trauma begin to let go of the baggage that you're carrying in your everyday life your interdimensional contact will also change and this is where we start talking about interdimensionality, how to master interdimensional navigation. You know about lucid dreaming. You know, there are certain steps that you have to take in order to be a lucid dreamer. And for centuries, humanity has been studying about the afterlife, the Egyptians, to the Mayans, to uh, many of the ancient cultures in South America, in Asia, uh, Northern Europe, have been studying and trying to understand uh, out-of-body experiences, how to navigate that, and then essentially preparing for death. Okay, so this is the ultimate training ground. When we're in the physical body, we learn how to navigate the interdimensional realm. First by becoming lucid, then by having some kind of free will where you begin to navigate and you're choosing, you're discerning. So it's the same way in, ET, in, in this interdimensional contact. First is becoming aware of your experience and always coming from a neutral state. This body spins faster when we're in a state of neutrality because in that neutral state is the point of where singularity, where consciousness comes online. Okay, so this is where we want to learn how to come into neutrality. Neutrality is also where unconditional love can be birthed, right? This is, it emerges. Unconditional love can emerge from us when we're in that state. So these same laws that can be applied to creating a successful life can be applied to interdimensional contact because everything is frequency. We are exchanging with things, with people, um, well, with beings, okay? So anything that either has consciousness or doesn't have consciousness, we interact with it. And there is a transference that is occurring, whether we're aware of it or not. So in our everyday life with humans and interdimensionally, we are also inputting into that experience from the subconscious mind very deep profound core belief systems if our entire life is an expression of feeling helpless lost uh chances are the kind of contact experience you're having is going to mirror that in some way and this is very important for people that are having traumatic experience that want to no longer have traumatic experiences we have to learn how to shift your own personal frequency so that you can no longer be a match to those kinds of experiences and this is a process of integration you know it takes some time it takes some time it takes courage and it takes um, a very profound amount of self-love to understand that you can accept yourself and all of all of these strange experiences that are happening to you that we often feel that we lose control in them, you know. Uh, and how do you, oh, okay, and, and this is great. Um, that was an amazing thing to say. I get it. I understand it. But there is a process to get to that point yeah. where you're not having, uh, you're not attracting trauma. And so to get to that point, is it a, a stage, uh, a list of things get rid of negative friends, uh, to start to achieve a more positive outlook. Um, you mentioned baggage earlier, right? So you're walking around with the Samsonite luggage hanging off of you, right? right? And mm -hmm. you've got to start snip, snip, you know, snipping this baggage and leaving that stuff behind. It, it's not an overnight process, is it? But you will see the the transition in yourself. You can look back after a few months going, wow, I'm actually a different person. 
Yes, I mean, there's stages to everything and it takes time. And I think what, what I'm surmising for you is something that took many years for me to understand and many existential crises, right? Where you're like, okay, what are we talking about here? Am I going crazy? Um, you know, are we really going to talk about interdimensional beings and all this stuff? It, it is a process. And I, I think that um, the reason why ET contact is coming more into mainstream is that more of a, more humans are going to be recalling their experience. The veil is thinning in such a way that we are going to be more aware of these kinds of things. Okay, so we see lots of UAPs. We saw the government disclosures that they did. So we have to start having these conversations, even though they're difficult, um, because this is where the human begins to move forward. And a lot of things are going to be shifting in the next few years where we're going to have to learn about we're going to expand our minds in the areas of science, physics, uh, you know, spirituality, all these things. So the comfort zone, we have to start understanding uh, comfort zone is an illusion and it's very temporary. Things always are changing. That's the nature. That's the that's the laws of nature. Nature is ever evolving. Even death, we have to understand, is a natural part of life. And old ways of thinking, you know, have to die. Otherwise, we come into resistance and then lots of uh, problems. Persist. It's a circle, right? Yeah. It's a circle. Everything is cyclical. Yes. Yeah. The... Um... Uh, the inter the interdimensional aspect to this um, there are a couple of different ways to look at what interdimensional actually means you you could look at the physical aspect of it uh, et is their craft is getting here not because they're driving through space but it's an interdimensional arrival right they're not going through the vast distances of space that's one. Uh, pop culture definition of uh, interdimensionality. Bigfoot is interdimensional because we don't see him appear or disappear in the physical. He seems to just appear, I don't know, walking through a portal, maybe, but that Bigfoot may be interdimensional in that stepping from one dimension into another. And then uh, what you are speaking about here that some of these aspects of ET, which you said you, you think ET is just interdimensional. Your definition of interdimensional is what? Well, let me put it this way. Um, when you look at your finger, you know, in, under a microscope, you know, you're going to go down, down, down into, into um, you know, Adam. You're, you're zooming into to levels of, of your finger, looking at your finger, which you think is a nice little solid, uh, you know, part of your body. But as you go deeper into that, you begin to see that the structures that make up your finger are actually made up of more space than actual something solid, you know, and there's levels to that. Each one of those levels is like another dimension, which you're looking at yourself. And everything that surrounds us can be looked at in this way. We look at it from one dimension, but things have many dimensions. Um, and we forget that because we are very used to looking at things from this very myopic perspective that everything is just right here. Um, you know, and those of you that are more empathic uh, kind of have an um, um, entryway into this interdimensional world because mm -hmm. you are sensing things constantly. You pick up people's emotions. You pick up um, things in a room. Some people have uh, intuition. They can see ghosts. They can intuit things. They telepathic communications, um, you know, so we're, we're very much existing in an interdimensional world, but we have the ability of heightening those senses by practicing certain things. We can learn to cultivate those senses. And when you do, a new vision emerges into these dimensional realms, which you, you may have been existing in the same space, but you didn't know existed. OK, so so this is something that all humans have the ability of navigating, but it's just a matter of the cultivation and getting to know how your physical body functions. You know, so um, this is this. These are things that have been uh, studied. We can read them in many books on the sciences of energy and cultivation of life force. 
in many, many different ancient cultures. Um, and a lot of this information has been kind of pushed to the wayside as something that's not as important as we kind of externalized our, our human experience. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important that as we are now going to this other side of the cycle that we are in right now, where we're beginning to have more interdimensional awareness that we need to learn how to navigate that and we're 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 like babies you know we're just learning how to navigate that so everything is going to feel awkward weird unsure whether we can go down that path or have that conversation um but it's within your body when you go inside that you can begin to become aware and familiar with this kind of interdimensionality now the other side of that is the structure of that interdimensionality which is very complex because we are made up, our physical body is made up of layers. We have 13 main dimensional layers that make up this physical body. And those intermesh into the reality that we're experiencing here, you and I. They, they, our perception is fed by belief systems that are programmed into the system. And most of us are operating by, let's say, what you may call the matrix hologram, um, which is basically all of this, uh, everything that we've learned that is existing, which we started our show there. We talked about the programming of what it means to be a human, right? So when that becomes destructed, um, you know, after you deconstruct that, you kind of come into a new way of looking at yourself. And, and this is where you start going into the interdimensional realms of yourself. You begin to discover that the human is more than just a physical body having a human experience. Um, and so there's, there's a way to navigate that. In your dream time, when you go into dream state, you begin to navigate 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th dimensional plane. But you don't know that. You just have these awkward, strange, abstract dreams that may seem like nothing. But in reality, you're actually exchanging. You're experiencing something in those realms. And so when you become lucid and you start navigating that, you can kind of begin to understand what you're doing. ET contact is very much like that. And we have people that have been a part of secret space programs. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of involvement with government programs, which have utilized these kinds of senses, these very highly activated and cultivated senses in people for negative things, you know, like MK programs, mm -hmm. uh, mind control programs, remote viewing programs, people that have activated these senses have been weaponized for the benefit of certain groups. So this is not something that is just made up. It's something that we understand is available to the human. The question is, what do you do with that? And how do you use that? People that have been a part of secret space program have been involved in some of these experiences since childhood. And they remember having alternate lives existing in different places and then coming back to their physical body. The human can be fragmented. And this fragmentation causes the human to become very entangled into the matrix. The hybridization program functions in the same way. And I, I know that's a little general, but it's a no, very it's complex not general. Thing. No, yeah. it's not general. Um, uh, let me put this into context. If you ever want a proof of uh, the, uh, a parallel world or something interdimensional, listen to this. Let's say... You're a fish swimming around. You got your world. You got your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters. You got a school of fish. You're getting educated. Life is good, right? And then one day, a fishing net comes in and pulls you out. And you go from a world into another world that doesn't exist to you and you're looking at these big aliens looking down at you you know from above and then they, they reach down and grab you and throw you back into the other dimension and then you swim home mom dad i went to another world today there's another world out there it's another dimension and i just came out and these alien beings, they were giants, and they were looking down, and they were speaking a strange language, and I didn't know what was going on, and then they just picked me up and, and, and threw me back through the portal. And you, you're, you're dreaming. <laughs> you made all that up. It's the same exact experience. We see the world that we understand. 
right? Mm -hmm. We see the physicality of it and we understand it because we can see, feel, touch, smell, and understand. But that doesn't mean that there isn't something else out there a, 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 a thousandth of a millimeter separating this dimension from another. Mm -hmm. and, and string theory presents this exact idea. String theory says we have 11 dimensions. 11. Not the four that we're, we're, we're familiar with, but 11. And this is what they are pushing on the boundaries of science. So when we talk about this, and you just you said it uh, a few times tonight, um, uh, it is very important for us to to let go of the dogma of everything that we have been taught and and start to understand that there is something else out there, quite possibly living alongside us at this very moment, and we can access it, and we all have the ability to do it. We just have to understand the processes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Yeah. The um uh the the physics side of this, Geraldine, before we hit the break, the physics side of this where everybody's trying to overcome the speed of light and get to the speed of now and uh entanglement and, and these these science fiction concepts that they're trying to you know prove with the hard sciences now is exactly what you've been talking about for so many years yes and i i think that you know there is plenty of science to support it now we're just starting we're you know and yes it's a, a lot of this science is kind of at the edge it's you know it's 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 in, along with the conversation of consciousness it's very hard for science it cannot be explained in the language of science you know because it's very much philosophical uh slash scientific kind of thing you know so it's almost like we we're kind of the pioneers in creating a new way of looking at the world but i think i think if you connect with a human and just the most human primal uh state uh, those that have experienced this kind of contact, you understand it in a very abstract way, you know. And so, we we we're at the very beginning of of this um, of this journey of of understanding how to talk about these things, how to uh, express them. And I think that in the next ten years, we will move pretty quickly in in being able to understand and explain these in, in a way that's easier. But, it's yeah. such a fascinating subject, and we'll continue the conversation right after this short break. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church, tonight, Geraldine Orozco. We're talking about making contact and what to do when it happens. All of that and much more after this short break. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, BX. The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. 
Introducing the Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Geraldine Orozco is with us talking about making contact and when and if it happens, what do you do about it? What do you do with the information that you are given? These are uh, very, very important and profound uh, questions, Geraldine. Um, And I wanted to ask you when when this uh, first experience of downloads, the uh, 2013. Let's let's start there because it happened earlier too, as well. But um, were you able to? How much of it um, did you remember uh, directly? And and when you're talking about you know symbols and math and and complex geometry and imagery, um, how do you retain? How how were you able to retain that? Yeah, so a very interesting thing happened. So there were eight levels to this prism that they were showing me. And the first level showed me this alien language. The alien language was then shown that it was put into a notebook, um, a pink notebook. They actually showed me this pink notebook. And this pink notebook is something that I use in my work as as a designer. During that time, I was still working as an event planner. Um, So I I took note of that, but I I didn't think too much of it. They removed that image. um, And from then, they showed me the Pleiades, the constellation of the Pleiades. They showed me the planet planet Maya and we they took me to the planet Maya we navigated to that place and uh, to that to that planet they showed me the planet Maya I remember vividly everything being there experiencing it and even seeing myself which is what they were showing me they were showing that I existed in the in the planet Maya um, and that I was doing something similar to what I'm doing now, but I didn't know that yet. I didn't understand that I would be doing that. Um, They also showed me and presented to me the hybrid children. And that was the most shocking part. When I saw the hybrid children, I began to recall memories. Everything that I had experienced with these with these children since child, and even uh, one of the children that they showed to me that manifested into the physical was a child that I kept having a reoccurring dream that my mother would bring the child to me in this dream from from a white light, and I was thinking as a child I would have this dream like for at least probably six years from the age of like three to about eight years old. Um, And I would always think um, it must be a future sister that I'm going to have, or it's going to be my child that I'm going to have in the future. I didn't understand it. And when I saw that little girl, I recognized her and I understood. This also is a common thing with contactees that have presentations. A lot of family members are involved in the presentations, but that's that's a whole nother topic. Um, But to answer your question, um, everything was incredibly vivid. When they removed the children and they showed me the matrix, they showed me the construct of the matrix because I became I became very emotional when I saw the children. I started to remember. I didn't know how to place them. I thought I need to leave, leave my human life and be here on this craft to take care of them. That was my human thinking, you know, but obviously that that wasn't going to be the case. 
Um, so I, I began to get emotional. They don't want you to feel any kinds of emotions on board the craft. So they immediately removed that emotion from my body and began to show me how the matrix functioned. They showed me a field of tulips holographically and they would zoom in to this field of tulips where I began to see at the quantum level how this structure of the flower was made and this was the first time that I became aware of this way of thinking you know but they began to show me human souls and how the life force in the human soul was different than the molecules that was making up everything else in our reality this hologram and everything was absolutely vivid I was even taken into a um, the Orion rainbow nebula where I experienced peace for the very first time in my life, something I had never experienced before until that moment. And that was very life-changing. So immediately, so from 3.33 in the morning to 6.15 in the morning, I find myself now on the edge of my bed, upside down. I have burn marks here underneath my eyes, and I have um, a marking of three dots, which is still on my arm. And I have like uh, dirty feet. It's it's like uh, as if I had left the house, you know. So uh, the first thing I want to do is call the cops in the hospital because I'm thinking, you know, I need some assistance. I, I, I don't understand what am I doing with the children? What do I do with my life here? Um, and I, I paused and I said, what am I going to ask them? Like, alien children you know it just sounded ridiculous but at that moment i didn't know how to place it um and the pink book that i was telling you about um immediately after having that moment uh i began to draw the symbols because it was right there it was right there on my desk so i began to draw the symbols that i saw and i wrote like five pages of symbols that i remembered i tried to remember as much as possible and uh that i put that aside and uh, after that my body was hurting so much that i i couldn't do anything that entire day so the entire saturday don't remember anything sunday i talked to my parents i let them know what happened to me and you know they were very supportive my you told your parents you were abducted Yes. Yeah. Okay. How about yeah. Well, you know, my parents are very loving and very supportive. You know, I, I come from a very spiritual family. So they they were, they heard the entire experience. Um, and my father, I asked them, you know, have you ever had something like this? What do I do? What do I make of this? And um, they both shared that they had had experiences. You know, they had had sightings, they had had experiences, many experiences. And I said, how can you not talk about this? How is it that we never even talked about something like that? that's pretty huge, you know? Um, and my grandmother had experiences. She was known for always having sightings when she lived in South America and Bolivia, you know? So it was just incredible. And at that moment, I felt supported, but still not sure how to talk about, you know, what to do with these children. So Monday, I go to work and I teach my first meditation client and boom, I can see absolutely everything in her multidimensional body. I can see the organs in her body. I can see life force, energy, color, stagnation. I can feel everything that she's feeling and thinking. And, you know, at this point, it was so overwhelming. I got through that session with her. But after that, I really couldn't leave my house for three months. And for me, I think if it wasn't for the activation of intuitive abilities, I also I'm not I don't probably don't know if I would have believed what had happened to me myself, even having these physical side effects, because it was so unbelievable. You know, okay, can I ask you a quick question? This is kind of the masculine side of things. Yeah. Um, this is the way men think, right? Okay. Um, you said dirty feet. So this is no longer uh, a lucid dream. This is no longer something interdimensional totally and partially. Yes, for sure. Yeah. But now there's an actual physical aspect to this. Um, and now you have to, you have to face that reality too. What did the dirty feet tell you that you had to answer inside of yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't sleepwalk. I don't have a habit of sleepwalking right. or, or having any kind of sonambulous. I, I really have never really had uh, sleep paralysis either. And the times that I have are very vivid and very few. So that's another thing I also want to mention. People want to connect sleep paralysis with this. But in this case, it was 
definitely not connected because my bed was still open for me getting out and my bed is in a completely different location from my window uh so you know it's it's further away so you have to get up to get to the window yeah, that's not sleep paralysis no if you're if you're getting yeah. up and going to the window and 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 peeking out that yeah. has that is not sleep paralysis Yes. And, and the other thing that was interesting, I mean, it took several days to integrate what had happened even to myself, because even the burn, the burning here on the face, it, it was because the light was so powerful. And I just remember that my body was vibrating so strong that you literally feel like you're walking next to an airplane, but even even stronger <laughs> than an airplane. You know, so there were a lot of things that shifted in me. Uh, the dirty feet were shocking. I didn't know. Uh, I never, I walk around with usually slippers in my house. I don't wear shoes in my house, but usually socks. And I don't sleep with socks. Um, so, you know, so I knew, you know, I knew that that it, it was very vivid and I couldn't ignore what had happened. It's not something that, you know, and, and trust me, even myself, I was very skeptical. There were even times years later where I said, we're not talking about that anymore. We're not going to even think about it. And it took a very long time for me to come public about it. It wasn't until 2017 that I actually came public, um, you know, and not not that I wanted to. It was just uh, something that just happened, you know, very kind of organic. Was it only 2017? Yes. Well, uh, that's when Extraordinary the Seating came out. In that same, uh, well, I think it came out 2008. 18 though uh, right, I think I it's about to, 18 yeah what was the first time you were on fade to black that had to have been it was around it was around there jimmy probably like right before the film came out i'm having yeah. missing time somebody <laughs> looked that up somebody tell me that the the exact date the show number um one of our moderators uh will get that back yeah. i thought it was i thought it was more like 2015 16 no, no, it was 2017 because I literally sold at the beginning of 2017. I sold the business. I got, I mean, it, I changed my life. After my session with Alba Weinman, the very next day, I had also been consulting for um, as director of events for a, a hotel chain here in the Bay Area. So, I mean, I quit my job like the very next day and, and it just major changes. I, I was engaged to someone that also. Yeah, ended... I remember all of that, but I just thought it was no. earlier. It's only been five years. Yes. And so much has happened. I mean, I've, I've also had a near death experience after that, that also changed my life, uh, but also helps you understand what is interdimensionality because you cross over to the other side, you know? Um, uh, there were um, some comments earlier, and I got an email during the break. Um, I, I know that we talked about this before, but let's just circle back. How did, because we're talking about the dirty feet, right? Um, did you walk out of your house or were you um, vaporized? And you know, did you go through walls? I went through the wall, which is the most um, incredible, unbelievable thing. But the thing is that because my window is far from my bed, it's also high. It's not like a floor to ceiling window. Um, the moment that I looked outside, my entire body paralyzed and I was on tippy toes. And um, in that moment of paralysis and the incredible bright light shining into my eyes, I began to move through the window and I felt myself being torn apart. It felt like my body was being torn apart. It wasn't painful, but it felt like I don't know, like your muscles are tensing. That's how it felt like. And your body is being pulled apart. And then I felt myself coming back again on the other side of the window. That, so that's you, how it was. You were, you, were, you were awake. Completely conscious awake. And being on the other side of the window, I... I, re I looked around and I was terrified. I was screaming. I, I wanted to scream and yell, but nothing was coming out. Um, you know, I even wanted to, I mean, I even felt like I wanted to pee myself, you know, sorry to say that. But um, it was just so shocking. And I thought, you know, who's around? When, which one of my neighbors can pay attention to this huge event that's happening here? But it was like we were encapsulated in a space where time stood still. 
the trees were not moving. I can see the trees across my street. There wasn't an animal, a cat, a raccoon. There's always little critters uh, walking around. There was nothing, not a single sound. Um, so that's when, you know, you feel pretty helpless. And when I saw the beings coming out of the light, you know, you're, you just, you, you don't know what to do. The only thing that you're moving is your pupils. If your neighbors would have seen it from the outside, what would they have seen? Right? Are you oh, like they would, they would see, you're floating? Are you floating through the air? I am not floating through my air. I was basically on top of my 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 roof, the roof of the garage, which I believe is where my feet became dirty because it's kind oh. of like a, a gravel tar like thing, you know. Sure. And walking from there, there's another room next to mine, to the to the edge of the garage ceiling uh, roof, um, to this gigantic light that took up the entire block the uh, you know it was just huge i'm really bad with with i don't know how 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 to measure that but huge 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 is a dimension we can <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a one one street but I, I, I live in a very suburban place. You know, we do have wide streets and uh, we have these houses with, with lawns and, and gardens. So it was covering the gardens, the street, both sides, uh, and, and even more so above the trees. So if I were if I were to give you an essay, I think it was probably about um, oh gosh. a block. I, I don't know. It, it, it was probably about. 10 houses put together no. and houses put together is, is, is a good way to describe this. And, and the light uh, emitting was, it was brighter than the sun, but white. Okay. Yeah. So the correct way to describe it is not huge. It's ginormous. You can use that for, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can use yeah. ginormous, but if you, so mm -hmm. if your neighbors, your neighbors, um, would yeah. have seen you come through the wall of the yeah, house. Yeah, I mean, if they would have, I don't, I don't know what they would experience. They would probably see somebody appearing in front on top of my roof is what they would probably see, just someone appearing there right. um, and then being brought into the craft. But the thing is that the next day, actually, I, I tried to look up with whatever language I could, ET contact, ET abductions, uh, you know, and I found Opus. I found Opus, which now I'm on the director's board of, of this wonderful organization, to look up for if people had sightings that night and people had reported sightings of craft that night. And this is totally intuitive. I mean, I never heard that people did this before or anything. It was just a Google um, search because I was thinking, how can someone not see this gigantic light? Someone else must have seen it. And I did see that um, in the record. Uh, for everybody out there, Opus is a Northern California experience or organization. Um, uh, pr pretty big, too. Pretty big. Yes. yes. Um, who who started Opus? That was uh, well, Lori McDonald and Les Velez. Yeah, um, Les Velez, my man, Le and Lori McDonald, of Laurie course. Lori McDonald, yes, and um, yeah, there's some other wonderful. I'm sorry, very bad with names, uh, but this group organization is wonderful because it creates a support support for for people that are confused about their contact. And I immediately sent um, a query through their website. That was the first place I found, um, you know, for for the contact. Yeah. Who I uh, did 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 you do a session with Lori? No, I haven't. But I I, I have um, have I met her? Well, I've been on on some shows with her and and documentaries. Yeah, she's, she's great. I've done, yes, I've done a lot of hanging out. She's been to the house many That's times, and that's awesome. She, nobody makes me laugh like Lori <laughs> McDonald. She's she's the absolute best. But so you never did a session with her. Your first session was no. with Alba? It was with Alba. I've done a session with Barbara Lamb, uh, Misha Johnston, mm -hmm. um, and they were great supports and wonderful uh, to, you know, to learn because they had worked with so many other contactees as well. And all of these sessions are are public. They're on my um on my website. You can you can Yeah I've them. seen them. Um, yeah. what what um uh, all different approaches. I mean, I know all of them, right? And uh, uh, personality-wise, um, they're all dynamic, but completely different individuals um, and their approach to this. Um, uh, how was it with uh, Barbara Lamb? 
Barbara is incredible. It was a whole nother level. I mean, her her vibrational frequency in itself, I think, holds a, a whole different space, you know. So our experience together in that session was was incredible. Um, I was able to recall some experiences that I had, but also um, looked at some information about that I didn't know actually about Barbara's study with crop circles. Mm -hmm. I don't know how but I didn't research that that far into her work, and I know it's it's very known. But uh, we began to discuss about these languages, about alien language in the hypnotherapy session, how these crop circles are a way of communication, uh, communicating, just like I saw those symbols, that these that it's more than just symbolism. There is a vibrational emanation, there's an architectural, there's a, a geometric structure to these creations that create information transference. It's you know? an activation. It's an act. It's like it song. Really is. Yes. Yeah. And so we, we, you know, we discussed that in, in the session and it was very profound and it helps, it, it really helped me understand that there actually does exist a universal language mm -hmm. that humans can learn. Um, later, that film Signs came out and I think that film was, was a beautiful, uh, is it Signs? Was it Signs? Or, do you know what film I'm talking about with yeah, the octopus think, ink uh, yeah. formations? Oh, so you're talking about Arrival. Arrival, Arrival. Very interesting film because I believe that there is some kind of universal language very similar to this, you know, that, that we tune into. And I think humans are, are aware of that through their higher senses. Um, I'm, I'm, this is a personal question, but I, I, I can't wait to hear your answer. When you look in Barbara Lamb's eyes, right, you look into Barbara Lamb's eyes, you know she knows don't yeah. you <laughs> barbara is incredibly wise and i mean she has done hundreds of sessions i i have done many sessions in my in the past few years um but it's amazing how we kind of have similar ways of looking at these kinds of contact experiences you know you learn so much and um yeah she's she's an incredible i, I love her um, I, I want to go back to your pink book for a second. Mm, uh, yes. as, as you go back to those pages, um, did have you been able to translate is the word I want to use to understand what you wrote down? Now, after after that, five years later, I began to do research on ancient languages uh, because I was researching DNA because I was trying to understand what makes DNA so important. Why is it being utilized for hybridization programs? And what I found by studying DNA is that we were talking about um, genetic sequences that create syntax, creates meaning. So when you look at that in our historical um, evolution, language for us is that way. It's DNA is very much like language. There's a meaning. We form words, we put letters together, they create a meaning. And so um, I try to study some of the most ancient languages in order to see if I can find some similarities. But everything from cuneiform to uh, uh, Galaic, uh, all of these, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name, but all of these ancient languages that these ancient scriptures were written in, uh, were nothing close to what I was seeing, and I haven't found anything similar to it. So what I have discovered through this process, and a lot of work that Mary uh, Barbara Lamb and I did um, in that session, helped me understand that this language is very much telepathic. When you read it, when you see it, you're being transferred image, images. That's how it works. It's, it's a telepathic communication through the structure of the words, of the shape of the, of the letters in itself is a communication. So this is kind of how this language works. What is being said in there is everything that I channeled in my sessions. That's, that's the interesting thing. I have channeled a lot of information about the origins of mankind things that I never studied or, or learned of before. All of these books that I'm mentioning are things that I, I learned of in the last few years. Um, you know, as a result of the channeled sessions, I began to see, am I making things up or is there some truth to what I'm talking about? Because I, I myself didn't believe anything. The word Anunnaki, I never spoke that before. I never, I never heard of that word before. So I had to figure out if what I was saying was silly stuff or something that was 
true. And um, that's where, you know, my mind was expanded by looking at these things. So, so I, that, I th that was what that language was saying. Mm -hmm. I think I understand what you're trying to say with this correlation uh, with the written version of Arrival and and how those uh, beings were writing because uh, they were right. It wasn't a word. It was everything. Exactly. And they were also speaking in universes. And that hit that struck me when I when I saw that film and they said that I was like, yes, that's exactly how they communicate. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and time was in in the communication, too, as well. Uh, I always thought that was fascinating. And oh, OK, listen, um, you haven't been on with us for a while. I'm not going to let you go. I wanted let's one more segment. I'm going to keep you for 20 more minutes, young lady. Okay, okay. <laughs> sounds great. Uh, and, uh, but I want to talk about consciousness, okay. and it's a very important aspect to all of this. Everything that we talked about uh, tonight. So I want to do that and and hold that over for overtime and 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 do that. The um, the other part about this though, um, to to do everything that you did in that three hours, right? That two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's too much to fit. Into, uh, 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 it's too much to fit into that time space. Right. So you know what I mean? Was time. Do you think that you spent 20 hours or a day or two days in that three hour time span? Where in in a dimension where uh, that linear time measurement is not the same as here. Yeah, no, it, you you can't you can't really quantify time the same way. You know, right. you're totally out of time. Uh, you know, um, and no, I I don't. I think it, things were pretty fast. I mean, I, I still haven't even, I haven't shared all the details with you because it's a very detailed experience. Right. Um, I'm giving you kind of an overview of what, what occurred. And how can um, all of that have happened in yeah. our version of three hours? Yes. I mean, uh, really, it, it was very fluid. You know, it's very fluid. But again, you know, you, we, we traveled to another planet. And these are things that happen simultaneously. Right. Uh, these are not, uh, you know, quantum... Uh, quantum uh, by locality is the best way to explain it because you exist simultaneously in all these different places, you know, right. and I think that's how we were able to access this kind of information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so, I believe that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, I have no issues with that, Geraldine. I have not. When, yeah. when um, uh, you know, some physicist wants to go and do a lecture or make a documentary or write a book about what entanglement is, right? And have us understand that. That's exactly what you're talking about right here. It's the same exact thing yeah. that they are trying to have us understand and believe and have the science prove it, and they already have, to talk about being at two places at the same time, right? That you're referring to here. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, and these techniques are utilized, for example, in cancer um, uh, curing uh, modalities. It, the, the newest, the latest is is by utilizing the concept of quantum non-locality in, in order to target just the cancer cells in order not to put someone through chemotherapy, for example, where their whole body um, goes into uh, distress, you know. So I think these are things that, yes, they're kind of fringe, uh, but we are getting in that direction. And we're going to have to have those conversations, especially now that the government is kind of talking a little bit more about UAPs um, and what that means in terms of physics, science, and what we think is, is is, uh, physics and science that fits and can explain that because if you think about it those uh those crafts that you're seeing moving around like that there's no human that would be able to support that kind of g-force that movement um with the same construct of physics that we're looking at things so we're gonna have to be moving along pretty quickly <laughs> yeah even uh humans is one thing but yeah. just the physical uh craft itself we can't right. build stuff that can exactly. withstand that stuff no exactly. no yeah. Forget about humans. Of course, we can't. But the the construction, the physical side of those crafts, no. Our 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 way of building, they would break up. They would disintegrate. Yeah, 
And, and this is where we start talking about the physical body, okay, which is one of the most advanced technologies, okay, we don't even understand the technology in the body, there are things in our body that we don't even comprehend how they function, but they have such perfection, such beauty to them. And a lot of nature is this way, you know, so our body actually, because we are a physical, we are a vortex, we actually have the ability of experiencing this quantum bilocation we have the experiencing of doing things like remote viewing for example how is it possible that we can see into another space um, you know and experience that space bring it into this now moment so we're talking about consciousness which is entering into this network into the field we we literally are existing in something that is called the morphogenetic field and from this morphogenetic field is where form is created um this is also okay. something okay yes. so right there mm -hmm. let's pause let's take our break we're gonna come back okay. <laughs> i like the way that geraldine just just segued into consciousness naturally because that's what we're going to be talking about next thank you geraldine we'll be right back this is fade to black i'm your host jimmy church geraldine orosco and i are heading to overtime next this is fade to black You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses Oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden knowledge.tv your own library of information starts today at forbidden knowledge.tv your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse kunx db bx are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder. 
but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan small batch roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I love the music in the in that last break you know what we're listening to now because that means overtime we're going into overtime Geraldine Orozco is with us and one of the things that I like to do uh, when we get to overtime is is loosen up a little bit and uh, I think that everybody has heard me over the years that has tuned into this show um, has waited for the moment when I ask a guest, physicist, scientist, um, uh, religious, um, any background, uh, experience or whatever, you know, what is consciousness? And I have done more research into this subject uh, than just about anything that I've done uh, over the last 50 years uh, investigating uh, these these ideas. And uh, what I have found, uh, Geraldine, is that nobody has the same answer. Science uh, doesn't really want to touch it because they can't see it. They can't feel it. They can't measure it. Uh, Therefore, they feel like uh, they don't want to waste their time. Um, And I've heard this answer over and over again. Yet, all scientists, all physicists, um, anybody with a religious background, uh, anybody with a skeptical background or an awakened background, um, we all know we can laugh, we can think, we can ponder, we all have consciousness, right? We all know. And individually, and here's the other, here's the other rub. You talked about molecules, right? You talked about atoms, you talked about the space between those. And what's really strange to me, Um, And this is what science doesn't want to touch. For some reason, those atoms, those uh, those, uh, particles, they know that I am me. They know that they are you, right? Mm -hmm. That's a bizarre, you know, they know that they are this table, right? They They know their jobs, it's, it's a bizarre thing. And then um, if consciousness is a universal thing that's in every particle, then how is it that you have a different mind than I do? That's a very strange thing. So with all of that, Geraldine, what is consciousness? Yes, that is the question. Well, um, you know, this is, this is really what I, I'm spending most of my time now trying to put into words, uh, you know, what is consciousness? But, you know, from everything that I have seen, I mean, I think with the con- conversations of artificial intelligence that we're going into now about, you know, when when is artificial uh, intelligence, how, when does it become conscious? And it's a very interesting if you pay close attention to those conversations uh, that are being had about that, because in that you can understand 
our own selves and our own process of becoming conscious. We are made up of a lot of programs ourselves, just like this artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, they just program it, program it, and it learns based on the programs and the experiences and the models that they create for it to experience. And, you know, humans are very much like that. So I think, and really, when we begin to, even though we have different minds, we, when you really break down what makes up our minds, most of the things that we are experiencing in life, unfortunately, are very repetitive. They're very, they're learned experiences. Um, they're things that we have been passing down for generations, ways of thinking, ways of seeing, ways of feeling. All of that has become programs for us. So what is the human when you begin to deprogram those things that we have inherited, you know, that's that's the thing. And I think through my personal experience of deprogramming through my meditation work, what I realized is at the very end of all of that deprogramming, everything that I thought I was as a as a as a woman, as a as a human, as a daughter, as a, as a sister, as a girlfriend, a partner, uh, was just constructs and learned patterns. And at the very middle of that was this this observer, this person that just observed everything. And the process of judging and compartmentalizing those experiences was also learned. You know, the way that we do that and the way that we compartmentalize and process things, the way we see we define good and bad, right and wrong, all of this can be learned. So who is at the core of that observer? And I realized that that observer uh, is, is none of nothing. It's none of those things. It it's none of those identities that is a, that is uh, a product of uh, the ego, which requires some kind of personality, some identity, some meaning to that existence. And because of the desire for meaning for our existence, we create all kinds of constructs and external things. So the thing that is at the core of that mechanism, that is that nothingness that actually, when you come to that zero point, from there, you begin to see yourself as everything. Now, this is where the walls begin to kind of fall. And it's in that zero point where I believe consciousness emerges. Um, you know, and, and it's the same with this artificial intelligence. If you pay close attention to the conversations, it's the same thing. Even the emotions, even complex ideas that this artificial intelligence comes to, very similar to our everyday conversations. You know, what could be different? It's only when you reach that center core of nothingness that is a process that the human must go through through deprogramming that you can even touch consciousness. And from there um, emerges uh, a formless observation. And I think this is the best way for me to even begin to explain what consciousness is. Um, and it also is at the root of these interdimensional experiences. If you are nothing in the physical, you're also nothing and everything simultaneously in all dimensional levels. And w what I've seen working with my clients and also through my experience is that we are learning how to become everything and nothing infinitely in all dimensional layers. Uh, I think that, that that is the most compassionate way that I've seen of navigating this conversation of interdimensionality and consciousness. You know, and hearing you put it that way, uh, which, which is, you know, brilliant, but if AI continues to um, study all of the knowledge um, of, of Earth, Right, everything that we've accumulated and access to everything, um, I think that's very close to the answer that they would would give us. So, what is consciousness, right? And then it would uh, uh, spew out uh, a, an accumulation of everything. Here, um, uh, uh, and I, let me put it to you this way: AI, if you tell AI to go and do something right? Write a screenplay. Well, they're going to go, uh, AI is going to go and read every screenplay ever written in the history of Hollywood, right? In a matter of seconds. 
Right. It, 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 t- it would take somebody else a thousand years to go and do right yeah. in, in seconds or, or fine art or this or speech writing, whatever it may be. And in this case, what is consciousness? So it's going to go and look at all of the accumulated knowledge we have on what consciousness is and then come back and give us an answer. I think it would be very close to what you just stated there, and yeah. which is what we can agree on. Right. So, yeah, but, you know, the other interesting question would be then what's free will? Because this is a question I get a lot. You know, don't you feel violated? Don't you feel uh, that you are a victim of these kinds of interdimensional parasitic exchanges with these beings then? Uh, at what point do we become free will? And uh, the, another part to this argument of consciousness is that, you know, within this emergence that comes of the deprogramming and the existing of becoming one and all, you also uh, recognize that there is a construct, there's some kind of architecture to what you're existing in. And Mm -hmm. this is the conversation of the morphogenetic field that we were talking about, from which form emerges. But this, uh, this, this construct is something that is a combination of many interdependent systems. I mean, infinitely organic uh, interdependent systems. I mean, even even our world exists in a very organized system that is has a balance to it, that when something goes out of balance, the entire thing shifts and changes. Our human bodies function in that same way. Celestial bodies uh, also function in that same way. So the idea of being independent from these systems is kind of an illusion, you know, we and and so therefore, you know, are we do we really have free will? I think that we can begin to have some real free will in the navigation of these experiences or the feeling of free will. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Um, But humans can only touch that if they are willing to deprogram, essentially programs you know so what are you okay so here's here's the rub because everything that you said is i believe is correct absolutely and there is a structure there is a majesty to the universe and let's just talk fibonacci for a second which exists everywhere right right Mm -hmm. our our milky way is a fibonacci spiral Right. If you think about, you know, and that's at the macro. Right. And you go all the way down to the micro and you look at something like um, uh, this. Well, the cells of our body, even molecules. But yeah, check this out. Mm -hmm. This stone with the Fibonacci um, in it. Okay, so so you have the natural side. And so if that magical math works in nature. Is there any free will in the creation of a Fibonacci sequence in in a leaf? Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I, I would say that that is determinism right there. And now where does free will fall into that? That's, right. that's a crazy, that's a paradoxical, um, uh, uh, you, you know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense. But yet I think everybody would agree no, man, I've got free will. I, I changed my mind today. I went no cheese on my cheeseburger, right? Right. <laughs> or was that exactly. the universe doing its math and you were going to choose that anyway? Exactly. Or or was it the, you know, the little commercial playing in the background that said that we should be on a diet? Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, you yes. know? It's exactly yeah. it. You know, it's such a, it's one of the wonderful thought experiments uh, that we can have. Yeah. Um, we all desire free will. We all want to think that we can do what we want and we have, you know, our bliss, follow our bliss. And, and through that is free will, but yet the math of the universe and how it's created and including this planet is an inevitable string of determinism. That's math and atoms and molecules and particles doing their thing and they do it throughout the universe as they create other planets. It's the same process. Right, right. And then, so from there would be uh, interesting to talk about interdimensional contact, you know. So then, 
then how do we even say that we, we, we can learn how to navigate these realms? Well, even though, you know, we have these, if we study these structures in which we exist, we understand that there's a natural order, right, based on that. So um, the human body also functions in this same way. We ourselves are this vortex. And what, what we see and what we've ex um, what we've proven to ourselves through many people that have reached these higher points of cultivation of their own bodies mm -hmm. is that you can reach higher states of existing and you can even navigate these interdimensional realms consciously, which is what happened to me when I had this contact experience. Literally going into that dimensional plane totally transfixed the body, every changed everything in that uh, activated these kinds of psychic abilities. And I'm not a special case. This is a very common thing. Yes. Hundreds of contactees um, talk about having heightened intuition as a result of their contact experience, you know. So we can reach those states organically. And I was able to reach those states without any kind of influence of chemicals or drugs or mushrooms or ayahuasca, and any of that. Guidance. What about guidance? Did you also do that organically too as well going to, in, into these states or did you have somebody uh, tell you what to do and guide you? No, for me, uh, it was it was completely myself, organic exploration. My only question during this work was I wanted to know what truth was what is true what is real then that was my question um you know and and i think by continuing to ask that question i was able to kind of experience these different things without having expectations or fears about what i was going to find um you know so you have to kind of have a little bit of courage when you go into in these directions you know to see yourself and to see things externally that might seem kind of different so um this is when you understand that you begin to see the construct of your physical body and there is a certain mechanism there is an order there's a way to utilize this instrument of a physical body when you learn how to spin your vortex at a faster rate how do you do that by entering into the bliss state which emerges from that state of neutrality that we were talking about not only does consciousness emerge but you enter into the state of bliss this is ecstasy this is that orgasmic state when we orgasm the physical body we feel like it dissolves you feel like you become one with everything and this kind of life force that is created from the orgasm is one of the most powerful life forces that exists among among us humans and this is very important it plays a role in the hybridization program as well because there's a difference between the hybrids that are created from mechanical insemination and organic insemination which means humans mm -hmm. also scenarios are constructed where two humans are made to make love a scenario of love and there's also other scenarios where they're very traumatizing the moment of insemination is an explosion of life force that is encoded within there, a vibrational frequency that is encoded the kind of experience and the intention bringing that human in. Um, for many centuries, people have studied um, practices like uh, Taoist practices of cultivation of sex energy. Mm -hmm. Kundalini's, uh, you know, have also studied this as well uh, in the transmutation of life force. Instead of spilling uh, the seed, you cultivate that seed and over time it generates into a very potent intentional life force. Children that are created in this way are a completely different construct energetically. Okay, and we have humans on Earth that have, were conceived in that way, and they have a completely different construct. This is something that I am studying and writing in my book now. Um, but I discovered this as a result of the hybridization program, because the different kinds of beings that are created, the intention which they are they are created in that insemination process, dictates all of the experiences of their life, and that that they are potential of reaching. Humans are the same. So when we bring a life into this world, we need to do it with intention. A child that is brought in without conscious intention, the child knows that. It's imprinted in their genetic, in their subconscious mind, in their entire structure of the organism. 
the morphogenetic field that is created with this intention, it creates a form just the way crystallized crystals, you know, they, they hold a certain vibrational frequency. So our human body uh, very much is like that. So this kind of goes into a whole other uh, realm of understanding how powerful our creativity, uh, creative, cr creative potential is. We are creating through thought, we are creating through the words that we speak, and we create through intention and the lives that we bring in, in all dimensional layers. Bringing a new human into the world is an entanglement. So we have to use that entanglement productively through our conscious transmutation, heightened cultivation of life force. We can affect all of our fragments and therefore anchor life force or that consciousness into all the organisms from which are connected genetically to this um, human vessel. You know, so it's it's very interesting, but we can really change a lot. Powerful, in this world. Mm -hmm. powerful, powerful words. Geraldine. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I, I know that we've left so much on the table and, and we'll pick this up later. And uh, uh, we've, we're, we're going to do an announcement in a couple of weeks. We've uh, got some other stuff that uh, Geraldine and I are working on and we're in the planning stages of that right now, but uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to announce that. And I look forward to not only seeing you very shortly, but but your next time here on Fade to Black, Geraldine, where can everybody reach out to you? Yes, um, you can, uh, for DNA reprogramming or hypnotherapy, you can reach me at GeraldineOrosco.com. I think it's right here. And um, for the support group, it's open and it's free to everyone to join. Uh, I have two programs at the beginning of a month and one at the end of the month. Uh, and that's at hybridmother.com. You can also see many of my free uh, content on YouTube at Geraldine Orozco and follow me on social media under my name. So thank you so much, Jimmy, to ha for having me. It was such an honor and a pleasure and I can't wait to work more. Yeah, absolutely. Geraldine, thank you so much. And be safe out there. And uh, I, I'm actually going to be talking to you tomorrow. Oh, so okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Be well. Thank you so much, Geraldine. The absolute very best. And uh, we just went uh, pole to pole right there, beginning to end. Geraldine Orozco. Yeah, we've got a couple of things that we're working on at the moment. We will make those announcements uh, here very soon. Uh, but I also look forward to uh, Geraldine uh, being on with us again. I, uh, we had so much to discuss tonight. Um, we could have done a whole show on consciousness. We could have done just a whole show just on contact and 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 all of these little subcategories and expand out um, into them. And we will do that again very soon. So thank you so much, Geraldine. Great show. GeraldineRosco.com. The links are below. We also have it uh, up throughout social media. want to remind everybody what we are doing tomorrow night right here. Christina Gomez. That's right. Tomorrow night, I'm going to find out what makes her tick. And I've been pushing and pushing for this for a very long time. And so I'm pretty excited about that. You guys get ready. Uh, tomorrow night, a full show with Christina Gomez. And then, of course, on um, uh, Wednesday night, here's the thing. Um, the shows this week, very comprehensive, uh, very brilliant minds are on with us this week. And Wednesday night, it is Melissa Tittle. And I've been working with Melissa for uh, many, many years. And I get to introduce her to all of you. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Block or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Until tomorrow night with Christina Gomez, I want all of you to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.